And as I'm like screaming and losing my mind from all the from all the adrenaline, she tells me that uh, that she was a ri- that as she was originally coming out to give me the room key, uh, two of them came up to the door describing me and asking if she knew where I was or who I was. And she was like, "Travis," and they were like, "Yeah, we're looking to tag him." Okay, I don't know what that fucking means. I don't know what tagging me means, but I don't want it to happen to me. I, that's what I know. They said that yeah, we're looking to tag him or we're trying to tag him. I don't. That scares the shit out of me. Um, and then, and like as they were saying it, they were walking up towards the door. She had, she was like kind of leaned out, um, and one of them tried to grab her by the hand, but she closed the door in time. Like as soon as and, and as soon as the hallway was clear, she rushed down to me. Um, anyway, once we got to her grandma's, I, I took some benzo that her grandma gave me to calm my nerves, but it didn't do much. Um, I just paced around Lynn's room until dawn, freaking out, thinking they had, like, broken in and cleared cleared out my room and, like, hurt my sugar gliders and shit. I was just freaking out in general from all the adrenaline. Um, at 7, once the front desk opened, we pulled up to the, uh, we pulled up to the front of the hotel and told them, told them everything that happened. They made a police report and had me, uh, had me sign a bunch of shit. And now I'm being escorted back and forth to, <laughs> to my room. I, I didn't sleep for days, and I'm still extremely paranoid. I'm constantly checking the window to make sure my car hasn't been fucked with, and I'm looking out the peephole every time I hear the slightest noise from outside my room. I also don't leave between between 12 a.m. and 7 a.m. I'm actually really sick of the paranoia. Like, I'm to the point of buying a gun at this point. I mean, if if you guys remember the reason I'm in this hotel in the first place is because my house was broken into twice, and somebody tried to break into my car, so I had to fix the you know driver's side lock and door all and all that. And then Lynn being disloyal to me, and and, and even JoJo stole fifty dollars from me the other the other day. Over the last two months or so, I've developed this fear this fear of of fellow human beings that I never had. Like this morning, some Russian guy in the elevator was talking to me, and uh, he was reaching, I was going down to get breakfast, and he reached over to like pull a coin out of my ear, but instead it was a little paper mache dove or whatever. But I like freaked out on him, I was like, whoa, whoa homie, keep your hands to yourself, Jesus. And And it really scared me, like just him reaching over and pulling something out of my ear or whatever. And that's just how I am now. Like, like I'm just really, really fucked up, and I'm super shaky and scared around people that I don't know. And I'm even reconsidering the relationships I have with people I do know. I'm just all fucked up in my head over having all these people fucking with me, and I'm and I've done absolutely nothing to justify it. And and when that's the case, when your life is getting fucked with for no reason at all, there's nothing you can and there's nothing you can really do about it. Like, like I can't I can't I can't fix anything for any sense of reassurance. Like I I just have to get a gun and hope that that these things stop happening to me at some point. I mean what those guys did was choreographed. They were they were waiting out there to ambush me. And and I've never seen those people in my life. It's like what is the appropriate reaction I should have here? I'm just I'm just scared of shit now and I hate it. I fuck I fucking hate it. I just I want a place to put my body and 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 put all of my things in that place. I'll put all of my belongings in that place, and secure the fuck out of it with a bunch of locks and cameras, and buy a gun, and that's what I need to do. I was talking about this the other day on uh, TR Shady. It's a forum I go to. People being people being able to hurt innocent things. It feels like a glitch in life. It feels like a glitch in the system. Um, because sympathy, sympathy and empathy is what is what defines us as human beings. I'm so tired of hearing about how how we need to punish those who have done things that that we can't take back, who have done irreversible things. Like the thing already happened, and nature allowed it. And nature is objectively, by definition, our god. So, so what is the point of compassion and empathy? being built into us from birth when when you share planets with so many sociopathic people um, 
there's so many people who don't have who don't have those things, who don't have the compassion and don't I'm sick of feeling like I should do something about it, about all the fucking evil in the world and then realizing I'm too small and temporary to ever make any real impact, any real lasting impact for the people who are who who will be here after me. It's it's too easy to give in to evil and cuntiness for personal profit to ever expect enough people not to. So if this really is some sort of simulation that we set up for ourselves, somebody or some force outside of myself needs to fix this imbalance because there's simply not enough of a supply of good to overcome the not good. And I'm tired of just being a member of, a, of the audience in this. I hate, being, I hate being plugged into it, whatever the fuck this experience is, because I'll never win. I'll never... I'll never overcome the darkness that surrounds me. I can't. There, there's no, like, there's no order of words or actions that I can execute to get that desired outcome. But what I can do, what what I what I what I can sure as hell do is fuck people up and get away with it my whole life, and even make a profit doing so. That's why, dude. It's it's it, it's a glitch. It's a glitch that caps out our evolution because we'll never be working together as one giant machine enough to ever achieve humanity's maximum potential. The machine doesn't evenly distribute power. It's always lopsided and you end up with these billions of people suffering and, and nothing working smoothly enough. Uh, even though we have more than enough resources to supply everybody with everything and still progress through... Uh, and still progress technology and still and still progress as a species what we don't have enough of a supply of is the want not enough of the machine wants to make it this way you know that because the minute you bring it up you get called a hippie faggot and told and told to go smoke some more weed it's fucked some more uh, some more notes I took um, are I feel that personally, I feel that like, I feel like I'm an antenna for something that's not here. Like I'm representing something that's trying to grow here, and I'm sort of a seed of whatever, whatever wants it here. Like, like when an awesome idea pops into my head out of nowhere, or I do something really cool or beneficial that'll affect a lot of people, I don't feel like I did that. I don't feel like that's me. I feel sort of like, like of course, that's just what I'm supposed to be doing. I feel like a printer instead of the computer that it's connected to, you know? And and when I'm printing or producing things of value to the environment around me, that's when I feel best. That's when I feel like I'm doing something right. So yeah, I feel like I feel like an antenna or a beacon for something, I guess. Which goes hand in hand with the whole be good thing, I guess. Because good is what makes things grow. Good being good and nice causes trust in relationships, which inevitably <laughs> leads to, you know, bonding, which leads to sex, which produces babies, which is the next generation. It's, you know. But I mean, in everything, care and love is the source of all growth anywhere. And that starts with a seed composed of its own environment. So I think that's interesting. I also came to the conclusion that I'm just mad at everybody. I need to stop that. I need to fi if I ever want to stop, I need to figure out how I would react to me in every situation. And the people that react to me that I would are the ones that I can't be mad at if I ever hope to make any friends. And actually, I think that's it. One of the big th one of the big things I learned on LSD is um, the intensity of your trip comes down to how far you're able to zoom out. Like how much you're able to truly let go of your grasp on this reality and your little safety harnesses that keep you from freaking out every second over the fact that, that you're an insignificant speck riding this convertible rock that's flying through space around a star or whatever, whatever, whatever a star is. The more you're able to just let go and, and, and turn yourself inside out and throw yourself into that abyss, the more you, z the more you zoom out, the crazier the trip gets. Now, of course, there is such thing as too low of a dose where you can't really let go, like you can't get past that threshold. Um, but after your average two hits or so, you're susceptible to, to just as deep of a trip as the dude who took, you know, like 30 hits. You just won't trip for as long. But that's all, that's how almost all psychedelics work. They'll build you, they'll, they'll like build the pool around you, but you have to learn how to swim out. 
and some people some people are just some people are just dumb they're just unable to zoom out very far there's like a wall of ignorance or a wall of ego that they're that they're chained to and it's too big and necessary towards who they choose to be for them to be able to recognize it let alone tear it down for the sake of a drug experience I mean of course there there's compounds that 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 force you away from it no matter what like ibogaine or or, or some of the deep tryptamines like ayahuasca and the and MDMT but those are experiences you got to graduate to and though and some of those can kill whereas things like LSD I mean there's 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 no such thing as an LSD or psilocybin or marijuana overdose pure LSD is less threatening than is less threatening to the body than unfiltered tap water and you'll die of suffocation before you smoke too much weed but I think it's important to consult a shaman or or or, or or some other type of expert in the field to guide you with those top tier psychonautics. Um, simply because you can seriously fuck yourself up, not only physically, but mentally as well. Like, there is such thing as a mental overdose on anything. Uh, it happened to me on the 4-HODMT, the, uh, the psilocin, the mushroom extract, with the Syrian rue that I mixed. You guys remember when I had those few months last year where I, where I thought I was making everything up and everybody up for the sake of my own consciousness's sanity? Like, like, what I really was was nothing that exists in nowhere without any sense of up or down. And that's scary as fuck, so, so this is my way of dealing with it. You know, luckily I was able to pull myself out of it, and I was able to pull myself out of it eventually, but that kind of stuff is, is not that rare, so you have to have a strong and resilient mind that's very good at accepting things and just riding the wave, and not fighting things that are beyond its control. And you have to develop that by slowly graduating and stepping your way up to the real shit. But I think that's it, guys. Um, I'll be turning 20, November 5th. And actually, both my favorite artists are releasing albums on that day. Tech 9 and uh, M. So that's cool. But yeah, I'll be turning 20. That's crazy. 20 years old. Karen, I guess I'm not really a child anymore. I'm still a child, what the fuck am I saying? But I'm not a little kid. <laughs> That's crazy. Anyway, I'll see you guys later.